we've already talked about the different reasons that we have in section 1.4. We just finished writing a bunch of them down. And I know during that time I had mentioned that we have the ability to reverse or flip a definition. So I just want to make sure we're on the same page with how we use these reasons because which one you choose to use within your proof is important. And if you use the wrong one, then it will be incorrect. So let's take a look at some few examples here. For this first one, I give you that angle ABC is 180 degrees. And I want you to prove that angle ABC is a straight angle. Well, if we think back to the various reasons that we wrote down a little while back in our notes, we have two different reasons that relate to straight angles. The first one is, if an angle is a straight angle, then it has a measure of 180 degrees. Or we have, if an angle has a measure of 180 degrees, then it is a straight angle. We have to look at what we're given and what we want to prove. And whatever we are given should come first in our if-then statement. So since we are given that angle ABC is 180 degrees, after the if in our if-then statement, we should see something about 180 degrees. So let's take a look at our two possibilities. The first one says if an angle is a straight angle. Well, we are not given a straight angle. We are given an angle that measures 180 degrees, and we want to prove that it's a straight angle. So the one that works out here is going to be the second one. If an angle has a measure of 180 degrees, then it is a straight angle. Since we are given a 180 degree angle to begin with, and we want to prove that it is a straight angle. So the 180 degrees should come first after the if, and the straight angle should come last after the then. This one is not a good possibility, considering that it mentions a straight angle first and it mentions 180 degrees second. We start off with the given information of 180 degrees and we want to end with a straight angle. So that's why the second one is the correct option. Let's take a look at this next example. So here we're given that segment AB has a length of 5 centimeters. Segment DC has a length of 5 centimeters. And we want to prove that segment AB is congruent to segment DC. Now I know we mentioned about the measure of angles. And we can use the same language for the length of segments. So we have two possibilities here. We can either say if two segments have the same length, then they are congruent. Or we can say if two segments are congruent, then they have the same length. Let's think about the given information and what we want to prove. We're given some specific information about the lengths of those segments. We're given that each segment is 5 centimeters, and we want to prove that the segments are congruent. Therefore, the second one is not a good option. That says if we have two segments that are congruent, then they have the same length. Well, up in the given information, we are not given inf anything about two segments being congruent. We're given information about the length. So we want to say if two segments have the same length, in this case here of five centimeters each, then they are congruent. So the first one would be the correct option.